Welcome, Wargamers, to another Miss Sussex YouTube channel video. I'm Chris, and um, is that gonna stay there? Yeah, it should do. Balancing cameras. Um, and this is a tournament review of the January 6th tournament, um, One Ring to Rule Them All, at the I Buy Wargamers in Woking. Um, forgive me, I'm gonna do a bit of painting whilst I talk about it. Um, and. I suggest you do as well, because um, it will just be me. Um, sorry about that. Um, I'm in the middle of painting. No, I've seen my little hobby update. Um, my hard room. Um, so, yeah, you know, just a few more dudes to go halfway through uh, this last eight-man warband. Um, anyway, yeah, the uh, the tournament. What I did want to do, um, which the plan failed miserably, was while I work out what. Yeah, I need. Um, what did fail miserably was um, that I wanted to take pictures of the games whilst they were playing, and um, I could flash up while I talked about them, um, so that you could sort of understand better and get a better image of your head of what was going on, rather than my poor descriptions. But that didn't happen. Uh, the next one I will. The next one I'm going to is February sixteenth, Battle of Borodur at Bad Moon Cafe, that one. Um, so, sorry if I'm looking down, that's because I am painting. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do it there, because it's only three games, so it's less daunting to remember. Because I always get into my games, like, immediately, and forget to, and, and just sort of concentrating, and forget to pull out my phone, and with the camera, and start taking pictures of things that are happening. Um, but I feel like it's a format that could work in the future where I'm talking like this and I just flash up an image saying oh such and such did this at this point and then you can see um, and the table set up and the scenery and whatever get a better idea of what was going where and doing what anyway for this one it will just be me talking so grab yourself a cup of tea whatever brew you want and get painting um, so yeah uh, Myself and Tom Sackham travelled up, um, did the usual thing of I buy his tournament ticket and he drives because I hate driving and everything about it. Um, I think the ticket was only £12, so yeah, I was, I was fine with that. Um, so yeah, he, we travelled up, it only takes about, me about half an hour to get to Tom's, and then from Tom's there is about an hour and 20 minutes to working, uh, if I remember rightly. Um, it's the second time we've done it. We went there at the in November last year. Um, it was really really cool. Keen to go back again. I came second in that tournament. Um, I actually took these Haradrim guys because um, there's no. It's quite cool because there's no um, painting restrictions at this tournament. So you see a lot of new players that have not played before, who aren't put off because they haven't got a painted army, um, which I'm fine with. Um, it's just, just, a, just a bit of fun, isn't it? So. If people haven't got painted armies, it does not bother me. Um, I prefer to have them painted. Um, but this last one I did have a sort of base-coated army, or first layer painted army. Um, so they had paint on them, but they weren't, weren't finished, so it wasn't completely out of the question. Anyway, that was last time, so this time... Um, we didn't say it was 500 points, uh, four games, um, general random first pairing and then Swiss ranked. Um, I think it was like 6, 2 and 0 for wins, draws and losses. Um, or was it 3, 1 and 0? Something like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say lots of, lots of new players there. Which is really cool because generally, because um, it is a board gaming club as well. This this local shop is it's a small shop. You really have to pack in there. There was like twenty four players, I think, and which is really cool. Um, you really have to pack in there, which is which is fine. We're used to it at the Dorset Arms, but it's a lot squishier than that. Um, you really get to know some people in that close proximity. Um, yeah, anyway, there's 24 players, um, lots of new local players who whose main systems are like other 
things like Guild Ball and More Time and um, obviously 40k and they've got loads of board games there like Firefly and Fallout and um, obviously all the Star Wars games like Legion, Imperial Assault, Armada um, so yeah there's loads of different gaming backgrounds so SPG isn't their main game which is fun because they're not in it for the competitive side meaning you see some really interesting and different armies because they they don't care about winning um, which is refreshing for a tournament and playing some new stuff um, which actually makes it harder to win I think because you come across some stuff certainly I came across stuff that I've never played against before which is like in my game one which was against Chris Jones who I believe is one of the local players and is often there um, saw him at the last one in uh, November and then he brought an all canned army which I'd not seen before um, I think I've barely seen a canned model in person actually um, I'm not a fan of them aesthetically but his army was gorgeous it was really nicely painted um, looked awesome on on the table and almost convinced me to buy one I'm um, just looking at it there but no but it, it, his army looked really good um, he said he hadn't used it much before, but he was keen to use it because he actually got it all painted up, which is cool. And it was all metal, I think, so again, really, really cool. Um, so, if I can remember, before I start my my army, uh, 500 points, I took Survivors of Lake Town. Boo, his boo, boo. Uh, which was obviously Bard on Horse with Armour. He led 16 Lake Town Militia. Even split of shield and spear, um, Sigrid and Tilda, and then Bane, he had six late time militia, and then Percy, who had 12 late time militia with bow, maxed out the bow limit, and then Alfred in drag. Um, so, yeah, that was my 500 points, 40 models. Um, I think there was only two armies that outnumbered me, one of them was Cheesemus Filthcomb. Who took a was it 58 or 68 model Goblin Town army? Um, spoilers, he didn't do as well as me. Because <laughs> um, the scenarios were um, announced a couple of weeks before the tournament, and they're all very heavily um, Horde friendly. Um, so, th so the first scenario play was Storm the Camp, um, and then it was Capturing Control. And then heirlooms, and then recon. So objective-based games, um, like most of them are for sure. But these ones were much more heavily favoured towards um, towards horde armies. Uh, and I already I'd already decided that I was taking Lake Town again. So I've taken them for a little while. I did well with them last year. Um, podiumed a couple of times. Um, so I went to go see if I could do one better. Um, so yeah, first game was, like I said, Storm the Camp uh, against this awesome canned army, um, which was, if I remember rightly, a Candish king on a chariot, um, and three other charioteers. It's either king and two or king and three, I believe it was king and three, um, so it looked really scary on the box, it took up so much space, they're on big bases. Um, he assured me they weren't as scary as they looked, and he was right. He got very unlucky with them. Um, those of you who don't know, they kind of work like a mummock when they charge. Um, so they deal... I can't remember if there's one strength four hit, or two. Um, I think it was two, because he was getting really unlucky. If it was one, you can kind of understand that. I think it was two. can't remember now. Um, the book is right behind me, but... Um, um, so you have one Candish King on chariot, three other chariots, plus another chieftain, maybe two chieftains, and then a mix of two-handed axe, canned, and um, bow canned. Uh, they were all fight for and defence for, so they beat me in fights, but we wound each other quite equally. Um, it was Storm the Camp, so... We swapped sides basically just so he could fit all his models in the deployment zone because everything has to stay within like and start within like a 12 inch um, corner. Uh, we start moving 
towards each other as you do. As soon as I got in range, I was like, oh, I'm going to start trying out Percy and his and all of his 12 archers who can reroll ones to hit. Nothing. Made no difference in this game at all. Got Because he didn't want to get his chariots too far ahead, surrounded and trapped, because Bard could take them out very easily with his high fight value. He can get Because the king... I can't remember if he did have strike or whether he used his might already by the time combat happened. Or by the time he met Bard. I can't remember now. Um, but he didn't want to get his chariots too far ahead of the rest of his troops and get them trapped and killed. Um, so I got about three, maybe four turns of shooting. And it, and he kept reminding me that it only takes one lucky shot to hit the rider, take him out and the whole thing's gone. The whole chariot is dead. Um, which unfortunately didn't happen for me. Um, yeah, I hit loads of stuff, kept hitting the chariot, chipped off a couple of wounds off a couple of chariots. Um, so I think they're defence 6, could be defence 7, can't remember now, uh, with 3 wounds. Uh, the dude on top is only defence 4 with 1 wound, so he's easy to take out if you hit him, but it's a 5 or a 6 to hit the um, hit the uh, rider. And 1 to 4, like, like a fell beast, 1 to 4 hits the, um, hits the mount. Uh, and you can't target the horses. They are as if they are not there. Um, so he moves up towards combat, gets his charges in, and placed kind of like where I want to. So I had this, had this amazing Amon Hen um, seeing seat uh, scenery piece, which he put some of his troops coming around to the scenery piece here. Had some of his troops going around this way. Had his chariots all coming in this way. My bows were sat down here, ready to shoot the chariot, and then Bard and his massive warband was here ready to see whatever was coming this way and um, sort of pin in the chariots with the bowmen like this. This is why I wish I had pictures uh, in order to better explain what was going on. Um, so Bard had a couple of cheeky shots at the defence for Cam with his great bow. Hits one, kills one, gets to shoot again. Hits one, kills one, gets to shoot again. Hits one, gets a three to wound, uses a point of mine, kills a third one in a row. I was like, oh, if only that was on the chariots. Could have taken like three chariots in, but you couldn't see it across them. Um, it was a scenery piece or a couple of my dudes hands or I don't know, something like that. There's a reason he couldn't shoot. Um Anyway, yeah, and the Percy's bowman took out nothing, just a couple of wounds off of the um off of the chariots. Um and then he his chariots hit my lines, which I was scared about because I'm defence five on the front, the shieldman, um, and defence four at the back, and their strength four hits. So if he gets to my back line, it's on fours, and if he hits into Bard, he's on defence five. It's the mount and the rider that takes the hit. Um, so that could be quite scary if he just got through my two ranks of dudes. Um, because the base size is so big, you'd have to kill like five or six guys to get through, but not impossible. Um, and I was really worried that was going to happen. Every time he charged, he killed maximum of one, and then gets stuck on the second one, even the defence four guys. There was a horrendous bit where the king went off towards Percy's warband. So I don't blame him, I think he could have taken him out, out that warband by himself. It's Percy's warband it was all defence for, including Percy. Um, so he charges into two of them, kills one with his trampled thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, he's then fighting two, calls her at combat, kills those two. Charges into another one, fails to kill him. <sighs> and that was kind of how it went. I think he tried to do it again the next turn as well, and exactly the same thing happened. Killed the thing he was fighting, and then went straight into another one. And failed on the um, the trample roll thing, and just stood still and fought it. And, yeah, that's pretty much how it went for him, unfortunately. Um, Bard was the key. Um, fight 6 3 here at combat. Trap one of the chariots, put everything on the man. He's got the six might, what five knight now after killing that guy earlier on, to <laughs> up it if he wants to. He's trapped with those of my late town dudes as well. Combat into the next one, kill that one. Next turn, charge into the third one, her combat off of it into the Candish King, make sure the kids are within six inches of him. Um, so he's fight six, so he's in there with Percy on the king, kills him in one go, 
and then all of a sudden the army is just all defence four, and they very quickly broke after that, and neither of us got in each other's camp. My Alfred stayed in mine just as a little protector. Um, after doing his job of giving Bard six might, well three extra might for a total of six, um, I didn't get quite get in his camp. He broken twenty five percent. Can't remember twenty five percent or random, but the game got to the end of him being broken. His leader dead. Um, he may have broken me in the end actually. I can't remember. Um, because he did get some points for something, so I want to say it was for for breaking me. But yeah, I I, I won the first one like nine three or nine one or something like that. Um. So yeah, that one I think I was always going to because I have more more dudes and the better hero. Um, the Candish King used to be five six, I think, but he's only five five now. Um. But Bard with the kids plus Alfred is insane. As my next opponent, uh, Ben Stanley, find out he had a pretty cool, pretty condensed, but still pretty competitive um, Isengard force, which was um, Vrashku, who was his leader. Uh, he also had Shark or Mog, who was a beast in this game. And. You have another hero? Yeah, Ugluck was his other hero. So three cheapish heroes. Um, and then had a warband of crossbows. His, uh, yeah, he had two wild riders with throwing spears, obviously for objectives, which was handy for this capture and control game that I played. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, I'm going to stop painting so I can actually concentrate and explain. I feel like I'm not doing it very well. Um, yeah, two wild riders with spears. Throwing spears, um, and then a bunch of Arakai, mix of shield and pikes and and all that jazz. So no berserkers, no ferals, no elites like that. So it was it was pretty cool. Um, I was fairly confident going into it, um, having double the amount of models than him. Um, so he deploys the majority of warband of his army right in the middle on the center one. I'm going to deploy back a little bit to make my, most of my shooting. He's got crossbows, but I had, I think he had about 8 crossbows plus Vrashku, and I had 14 shots in total, so I thought Bard could take out quite a few of those crossbows by himself. Um, which you in. Because he needs 4s to hit, and then 5s to kill my front rank. I had 4s to hit, and 6s to kill, but I have a lot more, and rerolls, and Bard only needs 5s, and... Um, would have six might if he had deployed right next to Alfred, but he didn't because he saw an opportunity where the crossbows deployed out on my right hand side um, objective, uh, right up at the front. So I thought, to hell with it, after I'd already deployed Bane um, and Alfred nearish the middle facing his army, um, claiming my back middle objective, he claimed the very middle one, and the Wild Rider was sort of near the back touching his back home one um, on this right hand side where he had his crossbows I thought hell with it this is an opportunity to kill his leader of Ashku and put my entire Bard warband right in front of them um, which he saw immediately and went oh no um, I'm not entirely sure whether it was tactical error or whether it was a deliberate ploy for me to put my entire army over there so that because that was near enough his breakpoint taking out that warband so he'd have the rest of his army free to go around and claim the other objectives whilst I took out that warband which is exactly what happened that warband however whether it was bad for me or him I don't know lasted a hell of a lot longer than I ever thought it would against thought it would against Bard and his 16 man warband um, plus Percy sort of Percy and his warband were so if that mess was happening up here with Bard charged in on Rashku sort of trap that warband trying to kill it with the objective right next to it. Percy is sort of down here, the middle objective is here. His army, a couple of dudes went off to claim the other objectives. His army came around this way. Bane and Alfred were desperately trying to catch up with Bard to give him some might, help him out and all that stuff. And Percy was just sort of firing some shots in the middle, getting a couple off, um, trying to hit Ugluck as well. Um, 
yeah, they, those two hit while Bard was still five, six, ten later trying to take out that warband. There was just a couple of them being high value of fight, high fight value of fight four, um, just kept rolling sixes and winning the combats, which is really annoying because I wanted to get rid of them quickly and then just move on. Um, in the end, once they did get Frashku, everyone started to ignore those warriors. Um, I made sure to get a couple of my dudes on the objective um, to make sure it was contested. Um, Bard sprinted off on his horse with a bunch of his dudes and, and the girls towards his back home objective where he had two wild riders waiting on it. Um, he claimed the middle one, my home back one that Bane was on but had to abandon because well, him and his six dude and Alfred would get absolutely annihilated by um, a warband of Orox with Shaku. Shaku was just mincing through everything. I put a bit of a roadblock to slow him, slow him down. He was just mincing through everything. Um, I was hoping to win that lucky fight and get him off his wild, but it didn't happen. Um, <clears throat> so we have the middle one, my home objective, his home objective. This right hand one was contested. I think he sent one wild ride around to collect that one and then went back to sort of protect his, his home one. Um, so Bard was going off towards his home one, and the plan was basically just to throw a combat off of them, and duck one next turn, go to the next one, throw a combat, go to the next one, um, which is exactly what he did. Uh, Bone was getting closer and closer to breaking, and um, I think he was sort of either happy to break or break me. Either one, he wanted the game to end because he had all the objectives. Um, I was putting all my shieldsmen in desperately as possible, just shielding away, didn't want to kill anything anymore. Ugluck was losing fights for ages as a one wound and no fate. He took Percy out, who still had all three of his might, that was annoying. Um, he took Alfred out as well before he could help Bard. Um, so I thought, oh no. Uh, and all my troops were doing really, really well, so I started to shield with everyone and do that thing. Like, don't kill him, don't kill him yet until I got the objectives. Um, there was a turn where he was two off breaking pretty much all the fights were in my favour and I think I won every fight, there was like 12 or 13 fights just sort of like two on ones in my favour along the along the thing um, and I won every fight but killed no one so this is all the ones that I couldn't shield in because um, he'd like charge my spear and bowman and whatever, so I had to fight it. Um, yeah, won every one of those fights and killed no one. And it was the first time I've seen an opponent be so gutted about not dying. Um, and then Bard just went off, killed those two wild riders, or I combated off one of them into the middle one, uh, or towards the middle one nearish. Um, next turn there was one dude waiting on, on his middle objective. Um, Bar charged into him, free hero combat up to him, onto the other objective, so I claimed three in the last two turns, which, and then the game ended immediately, um, with Ben claiming one, one was contested, so no one got anything, and three of them were mine, and I'd broken him and not broken, um, and killed his leader. So it was quite a heavy win in the end, even though at any point um, if I'd killed some in that sort of penultimate turn or three turns from the end, then it would have been, we would have started rolling sooner. And if it had ended the first time, then he would have won. Um, but yeah, I managed to sneak a win in there. I said to him, like, I saw what you're doing, I think that's the only way you can really play it without having half the amount of models as me. Because um, my. Th the way you play capture and go is you spread out and try and claim as many objectives as you can, but my army doesn't work if it's all spread out because it has to have Bard helping them out. Um, which, when he bought, ran off, all my army started to die, which proved that. So, until he went off and just claimed all the objectives by himself. Um, so, yeah, that was a good start. Two wins. Um, then I went for lunch. Me and Tom wandered off to Tesco. We got McDonald's last time. We both hate McDonald's. Uh, so, we wandered off to Tesco. Um, got ourselves some lunch in there, came back for game three, which was... I played AJ, he was another local gamer, his main game was more time, I think he said. And he had a Rohan Gondor alliance, pretty cool army, he had 
they're doing between 15 and 18 rides of Rohan. Pretty much a forward, forward out um, warband. Um, and then Denethor with 8 warriors with shield. And then a bolt thrower. It's really cool. I've used a bolt thrower at the tournament before. It's good fun. It really scares people. Um, when it works, it is devastating. Um, when it doesn't work, it can still give you board control because it makes your opponent play differently. Oi! The cat's scratching up my nice new bag. Oi! Get off of it. Get out of it. Um, yeah, it gives you great board control because people are scared because they know what it can do if it gets those six shots, those strength seven hits. Oh, deadly. Um, anyway, it was um, Elim's Vager Pass, which I never know how to play. You play it one of two ways, either you try and get to all the objective first and roll and basically the first person to roll a six has a really good chance of winning the game because the person who has the objective, so your opponent can only ever draw by breaking and leader kill and having a banner. Um, so if you have that objective, you can't lose. Um, so it's whether I wanted to go to each and every one and try and roll a six or sort of hold as many as possible and let him roll. Um, but I was kind of worried because he had the speed, he had all the riders of Rohan and Thedon, although they have to dismount to dig it up. Um, they can still get there a lot quicker than I can. Um, so when he, he rolled to have to come on first, he rolled third and first, he rolled a one, he didn't come on. It's fine. Um, start and roll's not, one's not the worst thing to roll, because I said he could might it. And he thought about it, I said, look, if you're going first, then one is probably not the worst thing he could roll. Um, not trying to influence him or anything, but yeah, you don't want to spend um, three months. One mind to come on, and I choose where. Not letting anything come on yet, but so he's like, no, I'll leave it then. Um, oh, there was a little debate beforehand because he had Denethor and Third, and obviously he he was brand new to the game. It was his first tournament. He'd only played like eight games total, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> he was using Third and as his leader all day, which is fine, which makes sense because he's a hero of legend. But in Denethor's rules, it says he has to be the leader unless Elisar's in the army. Um, and uh, Alistair King was on the table next to us and he overheard this as before we started the game um, saying no I think that Denethor has to be the special rule sort of overrules the main rule kind of thing Denethor has to be the leader so we changed it for this game and he was like oh sorry I wrote. he said, he was, he said oh, I'm really sorry that I thought Thedon was the leader and whatever um, and he went oh it's probably actually better for me because then I can throw Thedon into the fight and not worry about it I was like yeah that's true until Denethor rolled badly on the um, deployment roll. I brought him on on, um, on on one of the sides and then Paul and then later on when Bard rolled a six came on wherever he want, came up behind him and rapid fired him to death. Was out of the leader kill turn one. Spent all three might to do it. <laughs> so he rolled a four to hit, five to wound, get to shoot again, hit, didn't wound. Got to shoot again, hit, rolled it two, I think. So like, yeah, I'm gonna spend all three might, kill him, leader gone. Alfred walks up behind him next turn, gives him three might back. Sorry about that. After he changed his leader, um, I d I didn't make him change it. That was that was a, a mutual decision. So I did feel quite bad that he was just like, oh yeah, I can do whatever third, whatever I want with third and now and just charge him in. Um, but no, yeah. Um, <clears throat> And his bolt thrower came on on a separate board edge as well, um, which I sort of just tried to stop from shooting with Bane and his six dudes. Um, I didn't actually kill all three of them in the end. I kept winning the fights, couldn't kill them. Um, but I did stop the bolt thrower shooting the entire game. Um, Percy came on way over the other way, so everything. So the bolt thrower came on down here, Denethor came on down here, Bard and his woman came on down here, Bard shot Denethor to death, Bane came on to attack the um, bolt thrower, stop it shooting. Um, Percy came on this side and he was sort of like walking over the objectives, didn't pick any... I tried to pick one up as he was passing through, um, didn't roll a six, which I was quite happy about. Third and as Percy was coming on this board edge, Percy was... Uh, third and his woman came on this way, and in two or three turns just engulfed it and took it out. I like that. Um, 
I think I went to go and claim another objective on my way, which was next to the bolt thrower where Bane was fighting, and it wasn't that one. So there's four left, there was two sort of over five person third, and one in a nice ruin that I really wanted it to be, because you could only fit one rider into the ruins at a time. So if I could get it in there, just plug the hole with Bard, and then there was two other sort of entry points at the end. If I just line that up with um, shield and spear lines, then he can't get through, and then either place time or he 25% me, or I 25% him, before um, he can even reach the middle, if I can get in the middle. So I really wanted it to be that one, so I put the girls on that one, moved my army over it, and didn't didn't pick it up. And that's when he said, don't you want to pick that one up? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave this one. Um, and that's when he had the had the same idea to just stand over his two. Um, so it was a bit of a cat and mouse, like, who's going to roll first? But then and there was another set of ruins further over, which would have also been quite good to get, because it was it was really close, it was about 13 inches I think from the next one where I wanted it to be, meaning I could send Bard over with whoever picked it up and um, escort him back, and it was that one picked it up um, on a six, so all the other ones disappeared, um, and then I ran back to the ruins and just stayed in there, um, which you would. Um, while his army came towards me and tried to break through, we only had about 10 minutes left of the game anyway, um, so it wasn't like I was waiting out a two hour match. Um, just like, yeah, kill me, yeah, kill me 24%, yeah, I win. Um, there was only 10 minutes left of the game. Um, <clears throat> so I set up my little defensive prowess so he couldn't get through. Um, and yeah, the game ended there with me holding the objective, he did break me in the end. Um, I think it just played to time before he 25 percent of me. I believe. Um, Nairo's had a banner. Um, I don't think I broke him. So I got it on the objective and uh, leader kill. Uh, so that was quite a hefty one as well. So that was three wins out of three going into the last game. So I was in good stead at that point. Um, I'm just going to take a quick break here and then come back in just a moment. Uh, we're back. Uh, sorry about that. Um, just double check the camera's in the right place again. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, on three wins uh, going into the final game of the day. Very tired at this point with a big headache. Um, and I was drawn against Dave Farmer um, at Reconnoiter. Um, he had, in the old edition, which would have been a very filthy army, but in this one now, because they're not as good, Corsair Reavers. Um, so Dalamire, which is very cool. Um, Boson. Haradrim, Chieftain, um, all on foot obviously, and six or eight Arblesters, something like that. Um, a handful of Reavers, there wasn't that many. Um, some Black Numenorians as well in there, and some Haradrim Warriors, so a mix of everything. Um, I actually gave him my best painted army vote because um, he'd made all the bases from over the table I actually thought they were gen the generation shift um, brawling tavern bases um, which I had my late town on but yeah he sculpted all the bases and the paint scheme was just unique and I really liked it, it was quite striking so yeah um, in this one again, I think I outnumbered him 3-2 uh, to two. Um, so it was heavily in my favour however there is in the new edition with not everyone having access to every ability um, his chieftain having march was huge because he was able to sprint him down one side and get the chieftain and three or four guys off with him. Um, I went straight through the middle, um, sort of left my archers back a little bit, we had a bit of a shooting war. Um, to my amazement I actually outshot his arbalest, his arbalest did nothing. Um, this was the one game where Percy's warband did everything that pretty much died out of roll. 13 dice including Percy's shots pretty much get ones on all of them then re-roll and they'd all hit that's what, that's what it felt like um, and then they'd be wounding the Arbalesters on sixes and they just went through them um, everything they hit they seemed to kill um, and the same goes for combat as well when we hit in the middle um, we had a few guys going down on the right as well which after my archers dealt with the Arbalesters and once we hit combat they turned around and shot all those guys out um, and then I started ploughing through the middle, my heroic combats, killed Dalamire in about the second or third round of combats, um, his leader, 
and then quickly realised that he was broken. So I had to make a mad dash for the middle, uh, to the edge of the board, um, uh, pretty hastily, and couldn't avoid killing him on the way, so I lost about 10 models total out of my 40, and I near enough tabled him apart from the 5 guys that got off, meaning that actually through winning I lost. <laughs> <laughs> which which is hard to take, but I still didn't really really enjoyed the game. Um, Dave, Dave was really nice about it. He was getting battered throughout, and he was still laughing and everything. He saw how bad his dice were. Mine were just amazing on that last game, and his were just awful. Um, but it won in the game because he rolled so badly. Um, not much else to comment on that match, um, other than I basically just steamrolled over the army, um, but he managed to get those couple of guys off, and I was just two turns short of walking off. I don't think I could have done much different because I still had to punch through that hole in the middle. Dunno. Without March it's it's hard to it's hard to tell. Um maybe I could have sent person his war van round earlier um, instead of shooting those guys, meet them in combat and then push them past. Who knows? Anyway, yeah. Um I think he only won by one point in the end because he got like seven for getting at least three and three times more than me. Um, but I broke and killed his leader, which was worth like five or six, I can't remember. Um, so I did unfortunately lose the last game, and David ended up finishing third, I believe, which is well done to him. Um, David Clubley was second, so well done to him, and Alistair King was first, so well done to him. He was practicing for the Masters the next week, so he took. Uh, a strong army um, of Thraw and Grimmer Hammers, as he called them. Um, so yeah, did very well to win that, and I ended up finishing fourth, which wasn't too bad in the end. So I was I was quite happy. And as I mentioned earlier, Tom Second finished lower than me. He was about mid range, um, like eleventh or something. Um, so out of twenty four, I think it was, or twenty three, because there's one drop out, I finished fourth. So I was I was very happy, um, and very much enjoying this new edition. Um, so yeah, I've got, got another tournament coming up in February, uh, it's 500 points again, three games. I think I might go for Lake Town again, um, I really enjoy how they play, and although people see the list and the army and sort of grimace a little bit, um, they actually find out it is quite fun to play because it's quite squishy, so they're still killing stuff and you know stuff is still happening, they're not just completely being killed, it's not like how to off that they can't kill back or whatever. Um, so yeah, I really like them, so I'm going to take them again and see, see how that does. Um, until then, I hope you enjoyed this, I'm very tired. It's only 9 in the morning, but late working night last night, so I'll end that there. I hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, happy wargaming.